Today we'll look at how you can create a 3D pop-up effect in Affinity Photo. You can start with an image like this and turn it into this. I'm here in Affinity Photo and I have this image of a woman in a field. I'd like to make some cool effect where she's standing in a photo. So first I'll duplicate the layer here. With the layer selected, I'll just press Ctrl J. I'll call it woman. Now I want to isolate the woman here. So I'll choose my selection brush and I'll select her. Select around here. If you select too much, you can hold Alt and unselect. So I got that little negative space in there. And now I have the selection. So I'll mask her out. So I'll click Mask Layer. I'll expand it. You're not seeing much of a difference because the background is still on. But if I hide that, you'll see she's separated there. Now I want to create the frame below her. So I'm going to select the Rectangle Tool for that. It's one of these shape options here. So I'll select Rectangle Tool. I'll drag it to some initial position. I'm going to make the fill empty. So over here, I can see the foreground and stroke color. I'll click this to empty it. And I want the stroke to be white. So I'll select this. And we have the beginnings of our frame. Now I want to be able to bend the corners to make it look like it's in perspective. I could use a perspective filter or I could just manually bend the nodes. I prefer the node method. So right now this is a rectangle. I'm going to convert it to curves. I'll say layer, convert to curves all the way down to bottom here. Now I can actually independently move the corners. So let's get in some initial position. I'll hold shift as I pull this one to the side. They'll keep its horizontal position. Let's move this one out here. If your corners are unaligned, you can select both of them like this. And with the alignment tools, you can align them vertically. So now they're perfectly aligned. I'll move it over to the side. You can always resize it. I like that position there. Now let's move it below the woman. So you can see it looks like she's in the middle of it now. And now you can get our image inside the frame. So I'll take my image here and I'll drag it into the frame. Let go over the name frame, so let go. And you can see it's inside there. Now I kind of want that image to also be duplicated in the background. So with the image selected, I'm just going to copy it with Control J. And I'm going to drag a copy outside. What I want to do now is add a shadow below my frame here. Now we could use the FX option. I think it's a little more convincing to just copy this shape and make it a shadow that way. So with the frame selected, I'll press Control J. I'll drag it below. I'm going to call it Shadow. We don't need the image inside that shadow anymore, so I'll delete that. And as for the shape itself, we don't really need a stroke. I'll give it a fill just so you can see the color. Now it's not going to show up yet because it's behind these things, but I can move it. And I can position it how I like here. So this is what this shadow layer is doing. Of course, we don't want it this magenta color here. Let me make it gray. And I'll set it to multiply. And I can also add a Gaussian blur to it. So I'll select Live Filters. And I'll select Gaussian Blur. And you can see now we're starting to get more of a 3D effect here. I'm going to make this person and the grass in the middle stand out more. So I can desaturate the background. With the background layer selected, let's click Adjustments. Add HSL. Let's dial down the saturation. I'll close this. I think it's starting to look a little more artistic here, a little more atmospheric. Perhaps with the woman and the grass here, we want to add more vibrance and saturation. I'm going to group these two parts together, the woman and the frame. And with both of them selected, I'll just add a curve. Make it a little brighter. Make the darks a little darker. I'll add a vibrance adjustment too. That's another adjustment. Vibrance. Make her coat a little more red. We can also bend the edges of the frame here. So with my frame selected, I'll select a node tool. That one's off my screen. I have to click these arrows down here. I'll click node tool. And I'll click in the middle here. So this added a node to my frame. And with it selected, I can make it a smooth node. And I can just bend it in a little bit. I'll do the same thing for the other side. Click there, make it smooth, and just bend it in. It gives it a little more sense of depth there. And finally, for our whole image, we could add a vignette. So that's a live filter. And then I'll click Vignette. Making it negative a lot of darkness to the edges. You can change the scale of it. I like these settings here. And now let's see our final result. Before, after. Before, after. If there's any topics you'd like to see covered in a video, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.